Okay, so let's um, let's move on to uh, the guitars. Let's go to here. Go to the beginning. Now this is this is where we're going to start to have a little bit of fun with these guitars. Um, one thing that I like to do. Interesting how when I move my head back and forth, you can hear that audio moving just as if it, I was sitting in CLA studio. It's pretty pretty interesting. So far, I'm enjoying this experience. I like to cut out the mud that I don't need. Now, what you want to do is you want to bring up the high pass filter, okay, to the point where you start to lose something in the guitars. As soon as you feel like you started to lose something, back it off. Obviously, I'm losing a lot there. So let's just start here. Right about there. Okay. Now I'm. I also have drive on this console one, which is really nice. And again, I could go and maybe take out a little bit of that. Uh, let's try it. Going around five hundred. A boxy. Maybe crisp it up just a tiny bit. Okay, let's see what happens. Again, don't be afraid to crank that EQ. See what it's doing. Okay, so that's good. Um, and that I, I did, uh, I double tracked, so I've got left and right on the money lick. So let's go over to the to the right side and let's take a listen to that. I'm going to leave more of the bottom in on that on purpose. Let's go to the... I'm only going to take out a tiny bit. And I'm not going to add any high end on that one at all. Sometimes it's good um, to not EQ... Uh, parts that are very similar or um, double tracks, don't EQ them the same. Leave them, you know, leave them different so that so that they sound different. Um, the only other thing that I might want to do on the right side here would be to go ahead and crank that. I like that. Uh, I like that saturation. Okay, so that's nice. Um, and then let's, there's something that I might want to do with this here. I want to put the um, the money licks. Again, I'm going to add a bus. I'll click on that, and I'm just going to, I put the little dollar signs. That is always the money lick. Okay, so I want to, uh, I want to add a special plug-in on this. The UAD Helios plugin, and let's uh, let's just solo this. We can go ahead and set our loop here if we if we wanted to. That way we don't have to keep hitting play. But let's give this a little bump. Oh, it's 60. See how nice that got. Nice and rich. And then right in here is the is the upper mids. This is where the magic is. I mean, you can really crank it. Let's listen to the mix. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to leave that there for now. Okay, we'll leave that like that. So we've got uh, the money lick. Now let's go take a look at the power. I call it power whenever I have, um, you know, like a power chord type thing, and that'll probably be in the chorus. It looks like I've already, I already used the EQ on this as I was tracking. I'm going to go ahead and come up here to the console. Let, let's just show you in the, the UAD or the um, Studio One EQ here. We might as well do that. Let's just grab it since we got it here. I'm going to pull just a little bit of that, that bottom out. And I'm going to leave it like that for now. This Pro EQ is this Pro EQ is great. Okay, so I've got my power guitar EQ'd up. Sounds good. Let's go ahead and highlight those and add a bus for those. And I'm just going to call that power. Um, and since I'm not, I haven't made any changes on this um, on this console one here. I'll just drag it over easiest way fastest way to do that okay so I've got these quick little bridge power chord things going on and let's take a listen to this I want to just show this real quick let me turn it up so you can hear the so we got noise right there um, and and usually I've already done this but I missed these so let's go ahead and highlight these and we're gonna go ahead and go in here and just eliminate that noise you want to be careful when you're cutting that you don't cut off the air at the very beginning of the of the phrase or the sound or whatever it is because you can make things sound sterile by, by doing that so um but that's something that you that you want to keep in mind is clean up your tracks as you as you go or hopefully before you mix like i, I usually try to do okay so here's the um here's the first one and I'm just going to cut out the mud off the bottom of those. And that, that's all I'm going to do to those. So let's go to this one. And we'll do the same thing. Okay, so I've got the, uh, the power chords right here in the bridge. I've got uh, two mono tracks. One is panned. Uh, left to uh, 76 and one is panned to right 76 so I make a mono so that you can really hear the uh, separation it gets it out of the middle and, and that's where the vocal would be so it's a good idea to try to keep the the power guitars um, out of the middle of your track so okay so that's good on that Again, cut out the mud. So I really just want that cleanness. And then I'm going to go up top here. I'm going to crank that up a little bit. Let's put it in the mix. Add a little saturation. Yeah, and the reason why I cranked up that high end is because I wanted you to be able to hear the delay that's in that. That sounds really nice. Okay, so let's go right down the line here. Um, next one would be the lead guitar. Let's go ahead and pull this up. Take a look at what we got going on here. You can hear how I just go ahead and cut that mud out of there. I'm going to go ahead and leave that the way it is. Throw a little bit of um, saturation from the um, console one on there. Just kind of thickens it up a little bit.
Let's go to lead two. So let's go there. Solo that guy. Take a listen to that. brighten that up just a tiny bit and again I'm going to put some saturation on that you can hear how that really brings out the tone um, if you if you don't have some kind of a tactile controller um, and you're looking for something with great EQ and great saturation gate compression all that stuff it's all built into console one, so you might want to take a look at that. That's from SoftTube. It's wonderful. I just love it. Okay, so the next um, thing here is the guitar rise. Let's find that. Um, these are just little guys here. Um, that, and that's that's just going into the chorus there. Let's go back again. Solo that. And that should be fine. And again, I'm going to put a little bit of the saturation on that. That's good. That should do on that. And then let's go to the um, the slide guitar. Okay, we'll go ahead and turn on our loop here so we can just listen to that over and over again. Okay, that's nice. some saturation on that. Turn on the compressor. So that's a little bit more controlled, not jumping out too much. Okay, so that's good. The slide guitar. That I'm gonna brighten up just a tiny bit. Let's get this so we can hear it. Use the compression on that just a little bit. <clears throat> just compress that just a tiny bit so that it's the transients not peeking out too much. Let's check out the pick guitar here okay take a listen to that go to the verse that sounds nice saturation of that just a tiny bit of compression just to control it a little bit then there's a wah wah that I did in the bridge and I know I really just wanted the I really just wanted the high end part of this sound Not much there. Okay, so we'll leave that like that. Really just want that to be kind of subtle. So there it 
is. Okay, and you can see that I did put my favorite delay, the Echo Boy, on that. And it's it's uh, just a very subtle effect that I have on that. Just eighth note delay with a decent amount of feedback. You can hear it there. Let me stop it. You can kind of hear what it's doing there. So that's just very subtle on that. And then uh, the next thing that we have are the mutes. So let's take a look at those. Mutes, it looks like they're right here. Solo the mutes. And let's pull this up. I want to get... Leave that like that. It sounds like I could probably cut out a little bit of that mid that was well recorded so there's not there's not a lot of um, boxiness in there so that's nice okay good let's go to the uh, let's go to the piano next take a look at that there actually is a piano in here Let's turn it up so we can hear it. I got it panned a little bit off to the right. Hopefully you can hear that. You know, it's amazing about this, um, this CLA NX plugin is that uh, I mix on NS10 studio uh, monitors, Yamahas, um, that I've had since 1993, maybe 95. Uh, I've been mixing on them forever. Um, and I have to say that uh, I have pretty much forgotten that I'm on headphones right now. It, this really does emulate and simulate a real studio like you're like you're sitting in a room. Um, it, it's pretty amazing. So I I highly recommend the CLA NX plug in. Uh, if you're in a hotel room, you're on a bus, you know, um, you're on the road. This is a great thing to have. Uh, now, we'll see how it tra translates because I am going to take this out to the car, obviously, and um, listen to it, you know, when I'm done. So we'll we'll see. Uh, e either way, I'm going to put this uh, put this up so that um, you can hear, you know, what the mix sounded like um, that I came up with. Then we can tweak it if, if, if need be. But um, I want you to hear what it sounded like from, without any edits. Um, you know, so the, that'll be the test. Okay, so piano. And right away, I can hear that um, that's very MIDI. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to yeah, cut out a little bit of that bass. Remember when you're mixing, you wanna you wanna leave room for your bass guitar. And then if we see what it sounds like. listen to the mix so you can see what it really sounds like. Now I use this uh, fader port by Personas to, uh, to control my fader. It's another tactile unit. I'll show you a picture here. So that's kind of nice. Let's do the organ next. There actually is a B3 
organ in this. I don't want too much of that low end. And um, I'll show you a little trick on this too. We're gonna we're gonna do something um, similar with this that we did uh, with the with the bass track. So let's let's take the organ and if you're in Studio One, just go here to duplicate complete track. Now I have two tracks of the exact same thing, but um, on this second organ track, I'm going to put the little radiator. Okay. We're going to, let's just solo this so we can hear it. I don't want the noise. That gets a little overbearing sometimes. I'm going to crank this. And then I'm going to use the mix knob here. So now when I have both, that really makes my organ sound a lot bigger. So the organ now has gotten wider. It just sounds good. So here, if I, here's just the one, let's just listen to one track. Let's go back to the chorus where you can really hear it there. Now here's with both. You can really just makes a great difference. And it sounds like a lot of dirt. It sounds like, you know, wow, well that's uh, that's a lot of preamp in there, but you know, in the mix, let's do it in the mix. Kind of a rock track you know so the the organ being a little dirty like that you know that it, it sounds nice i like it so i'm gonna leave it like that um let's go to the acoustic drums and we'll solo that and i really like to uh i really like to high pass the uh, acoustic guitar so that, uh, you know, so just to keep it clean. And again, now this is, uh, this is actually a virtual instrument. This is a VI, uh, strummed acoustic by native instruments, I believe. I'm going to take out a little bit of that mid that this I'll show you this, this is where boxiness lives now you can make anything sound bad if you turn it up a lot but here's the air on that guitar that's let's listen in the mix Okay, now what I'll do real quick is I'll just go like to the organs here and I'm going to say add a bus for selected channels and we'll just say organ. And then this way I can control, you know, everything. Let's do the same thing for the bass. This way I can control those multiple... Um, or the copy channels and all that stuff. I've got them all on one fader. So I have a fader for my drums. I have a fader for my toms, a fader for the money lick, which I should probably color that so I know by looking at it. I have a fader for the power guitars. I have a fader for those two organ tracks. And I have a fader for those two bass tracks. Now I can easily adjust the volumes of these 
on just one fader. So that's something that, you know, newer mixers, uh, if you're not grouping, you know, like sounds to uh, buses, you should be. And then that way you can, you know, easily control them. Okay, so there's a couple more little tweaks that I want to make while I'm in here. And that is um, just to control the high end on some stuff. Um, let's go ahead and start with uh, the symbols for one. So we can you see what what I've done here is I've put this is a great plugin. If you don't already have this, it's called Soothe 2. It's basically um, an, a very fancy EQ that um, it kind of look at look at it in like a reverse aspect. You can see you see where it's affecting things, pulling it down here. However much you pull it up here is how much it'll actually pull out down here, which is really cool. And um, there is there are fantastic presets on this. And yeah, I'll be honest, I use these presets. These are awesome. There's tons of great presets in here. This Matt Symbols, um, I think it's a, another one of the Greg Wells presets that's in here. Greg Wells also has um, some vocal presets. Um, you can see here. I don't know if you can see that. Let me pull this over and make sure you can see it. But Greg Wells has done um, some great Jakir uh, Jakir King. That's easy to say. Joe Ciccarelli, uh, Dave Pensado. I mean, we've got some, you know, absolute giants in the mixing um, industry that have uh, done presets with uh, Soothe 2. So check it out. I, I promise you, you will absolutely love it. So um, we're going to use the Soup 2 on the overheads. Let's take it off. Let's put it back on. See how it tamed that? You can still hear it, but it's not harsh anymore. Let me, let me show you one more time. Let me take it off. Just listen to the crash cymbal when the chorus hits. Okay, now let's listen with it. It's still there, but it just sounds so much better. Um, I also use the exact same thing on the hi-hat. Let's listen to the hi-hat without Soothe. Let's listen with. Without. Hear that real high-end harshness that's going on without it? Um, this is really... It's really going to make a difference uh, in the high end. Okay, one of the other things that I wanted to do um, in listening to the snare, um, I wanted to put a reverb on the snare. Okay, so I just went and I made a effects bus. And the way to do that in uh, Studio One is you right click and you just come down and you hit Add Effects Channel. So that's what I did. And then I just use, I like this room reverb that comes with Studio One. I like the, the medium size hall just the way it is right out of the gate. So, and then I come over to my snare top. So let's do that. And here's the without verb. Here's with. Sounds like a lot, I know. But when, when the mix is in, And, and uh, while we're at it, uh, let's go over here to this room reverb and let's just, let's clean it up a little bit. We don't need all this. We don't need all that low end. And again, um, I put it over here where you can see it. Let's listen to the mix.
Okay, so I added a little bit of a reverb to the snare. Um, so that's nice. Um, and I think that's that's pretty much going to do it. Uh, I did notice um, in listening a little more, I'm thinking that the, uh, these guitars are just a little bit, um, they're just a little bit harsh. So I just went in and took the EQ off of those and just flattened it out. I want to go in. These, these lead guitars here to me... like that and then let's go down the last course and listen time for me to show you one of the uh, plugins that that I really like to use um, when I get to this point and maybe even along the way um, it's called tonal balance control it's part of the isotope uh, family and uh, what this does is it'll check your low low mid high mid and high uh, EQ across your mix now what they did was they took thousands of hit songs and they compiled them all together to find their similarities and they made a uh, EQ curve out of those similarities like an average of pop songs um, uh, it could be modern they have a modern setting they have a bass heavy like maybe for hip hop and they have an orchestral setting too that's a lot more acoustic um, minded so um, I end up using the modern almost all the time because I produce country um, and some, you know, pop and, and rock and roll music. That's that's my forte. So you you uh, instantiate tonal balance, and um, you want to make sure that you get it up here ahead of the CLA plugin. So the CLA a room emulation, the NX, that should always be the very last thing in your chain if you're using it. Um, so let's let's take a look. Let's go to um, let's go to a chorus because that's always a good indication of where you really are. And um, I kind of expected those highs to be out of whack. Okay, so you can see so far, uh, I'm pleased. The bass is looking is looking good. We can actually have a bit more bass. I like to get that bass up around in, in here actually for most um, country or, or rock productions. The low mids, um, there's no, it's looking pretty low until that guitar came in in the, in the verses. And the reason why is um, there's, there's no vocal. Okay, so uh, some of that um, low mid would be a vocal normally there are no vocals in this so I kind of expect this to be a little bit lower anyway everything looks good except for the high end and that high end is almost certainly my hi-hat I can tell you from experience so if we go here to the console like it came down just it's starting to move down just a tiny bit you can see it coming down it takes a while for it to actually show the results of what you've done so we moved it down a little bit on that and it's also going to be it's also going to be the overheads ok 
everything because that's where all the symbols and all that good stuff are. So I'm going to bring that down just a tiny bit. And you don't want to go totally off of what tonal balance is showing you, but it is a pretty good indication. Seeing if we can get that close to being within range, then you're then you're okay. If it's way up here, it's not going to sound good. So we are getting closer. We'll keep trimming down just a little bit, but that that doesn't bother me. When it's way up in here, and it depends on what part of the song it is too. Usually the chorus is a pretty good indication. Bass looks great, low mids. Probably gonna turn those guitars up a little bit in the mix. And in the verse, where we have that, that pick guitar that comes in that's real midi, everything looks perfect. So, you can tell. Total balance, check it out. Okay, so I wanna take a closer look at these guitars uh, in the chorus. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna to go to these power guitars here. I can tell that I want more of that. Then I can go to my Then I can go to my bus here and I can pull them down. There we go, it's feeling a little bit more powerful now. Let's get this back up. That sounds pretty good. Sometimes you just wanna pop a sound in. Um, solo so you can tell where it really is so the bright guitar I want to bring that up a little I want you to hear that and let's go back to the verse here and that pick guitar I'm actually gonna let's listen in solo I'm going to bring that down a little. Let's see where those mutes are. Let's see where that piano is. That's about right. So now that verse sounds real nice. Okay, so that sounds good. Now what I want to do is I want to go to reference. Um, and here's a plugin we should talk about. Um, this is by Mastering the Mix. Um, if you don't have this plugin, I encourage you to get it. It's um, pretty inexpensive. I think it's, I'll have to post it up here. What you do is you import a track into reference and then it allows you to listen to along with yours. So you can bounce back and forth. Okay, this this is one of the most important plugins that, that I ever bought. This one right here, Reference by Master in the Mix. Total balance says that I'm well within the limits. Everything looks really good right now in total balance. The only thing that's still, uh, I think, needing to come down, the only thing that's still needing to come down a little bit is the, um, the hi-hat. The hi-hat is still, that is what is causing that high end. I mean, I could even pull, pull it out a little bit. and then increase the volume on the track. Let's just let it set right in there. Yeah, see now 
gun in range. And I really trust that tonal balance, I'll tell you, because um, nine, times, uh, nine times out of ten, it is right. You take it and listen to it in the car, and if you didn't look at those levels and take them seriously, you'll find that your bass is like is blowing up your car and your high end is killing your ears when you turn it up loud. So um, it's a very worthwhile investment. Tonal balance and reference. Now, I'm like I'm liking what's going on here, but I, I have to say I want I want that snare to hit a little more. So I want to take a look. Turn it up a little. But I think it's sitting where it needs to be. I want to look at, at my EQ here. This is probably where it's going to happen. Go to uh, let's do a little bit of uh, automation. Let's work on the uh, let's work on the B3 here. So that was good. And then let's go to the next chorus and do the same thing. Just a little bit. Just kind of ride that. Vary it a little bit. was nice um so that's good let's i want to check out the um the acoustic guitar i don't need to automate that really
sounds pretty good. Let's check in another chorus. I just like to pop stuff into uh, solo mode just so I can really hear what, what's going on. Let's check out this lead guitar. We'll probably, yeah, we'll probably want to automate this here. Let's go to here. One more chorus here. A little bit louder now on the end. You have to be careful not to go too far with it. They always say the very last thing that you mix will be the loudest. So if that's true, it's probably a good idea to touch up your vocal last. Okay, so that's good. We'll just go ahead and put this back on read. And then I want to I want to automate this lead too as well. So let's do that. Okay, so now, and the last thing that I want to do uh, is I want to highlight these two and say add bus for selected channels. We're just going to call this lead. And now I can control, I make it the red color. Now I can control um, the lead with just one fader. I can control those two leads with just one slider here, which is really nice. Um, so, and, and I might want to do that. So, cause I think I got just a little heavy handed there on that very last one. Since this is a top lighting track, you know, that somebody will add vocals too. You don't want those guitars to be too loud. Okay, so that's good. So that's that's pretty much, um, that's probably all the automation that I'm going to do on this one. Um, and I might want to, uh, let's take a look at, let's take a look at these leads. Probably what I would like to do is um is to put the uh, echo boy on these and and let's do that real quick okay so we'll go up here just to give it just to give those a little bit more space um let's just listen to one
again, I, I don't want a lot of low end in that. I like saturation on the repeats. And of course, we have to listen to this in the mix. Now what I'm going to do is, um, actually, I'll just go ahead and copy this one right over to here. That's a sm easier and quicker way to do that. Now, now they both have a little bit of delay on it, just a little bit to keep that kind of moving. And those leads don't sound like they're very loud really in the mix if you're listening on headphones like I am right now. But I can tell you when you listen to this mix on the phone, without all the drums and bass, they will pop out too much if they're too loud. So we're just going to leave them where they are for now. 